Hi folks, welcome to the channel. This is a quick update video on um, a little mini project that I've done recently on the lathe. And, um, and that was to fit some of these little rotating handles onto the hand wheels. Um, and I wanted to do this for a couple of reasons. One um, was because <coughs> if ever I operated the machine with latex gloves on, um, the glove would, would stick on the handle. So, as standard, my fridge come with these types of handles. Um, it's a it's a fixed handle, one piece thing which screws into the hand wheel, um, and of course the latex glo latex glove wraps around it. Your fingers, the fingers of the glove wrap around it when you're turning the hand wheel, which is quite annoying, um, and um, it just causes a bit more resistance to, to using the machine even when you're not using gloves. Unless your hands are oily, then it works fine. Um, so I've seen a couple of people do this um, and I thought I'd show my take on it and how I've constructed this. It's, it's very simple. Um, so I'll, I'll take one of these off in a minute and I'll take it apart and show you how I've done it. Um, but it's, I prefer it I think it's a lot better. Um, I think bigger machines, like um, what I'm used to, uh, for example, um, a Colchester Trang 2000, the classic machine that um, I operated as an apprentice. Um, it's a bigger machine and everything's bigger and it's easier to get uh, spinning handles on those. Uh, whereas the Myford's a bit more compact and it's harder to do that. So anyway, um, that's what I've done. Um, and these are made from stainless steel, so they shouldn't rust even with my rusty hands. Um, it's a bit of a contrast in finish between the chrome plating here and the stainless steel finish, but you know, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I think they look quite nice. So, um, so they come off quite easily. <clears throat> so they're M6. Um, screw heads, cap screws, so they take a five millimeter Allen key. So they come off very easily. And um, so I'll, I'll whip this off now and then I'll take it apart on the bench and show you how I've done it. Okay, so here's the handle. And uh, just give you a bit of a close up. In one end, you'll see that there's a a cap screw so that's an m6 screw and, and it goes the full length and emerging out the other end is an m6 screw thread and on my on my machine um the handles have m6 threads on the end which is probably quite unusual for a myford because the older machines will have been some imperial thread possibly quarter unc or something um so um you'll notice that on the end here, there's a little uh, conical section on this little brass insert. And, and the reason for the conical section is the threads are quite loose and there's quite a big chamfer on the hole, on the threaded hole in the hand wheel. So that little cone engages into there and it's something for the, for the shoulder to, to pull up against when you, when you screw it in nice and tight and it's held nice and solidly there. I'll just whip this apart and I'll show you what's inside. Okay, so the the main the main bit of this um, is uh, it's it's an M M6 cap screw. Oh well, it's a bolt actually because it has this plain shoulder here, um, and it has a, a brass washer that I've machined up there. So that fits into this piece here. So this piece is um, a piece of brass bar that I've machined. Uh, with a, a 5.9 mil hole down it, which is a close fit onto this shank here on the bolt. Um, I cleaned this up with some emery in the lathe just to make sure that it was free of burrs um, and was a, a nice close fit into here. Um, and then the the last 15 millimeters of the hole is tapped M6. And then when these go together, <coughs> um, the idea is that the when that bottoms out, it creates kind of like a, a bit like a, a reel for um, like a, a cotton reel, 
So it's got a flange at both ends and then the the distance between those two shoulders um, is important because that's what control that's what sets the position of the handle um, and controls the amount of end float. So the handle is made from stainless steel. Um, I reamed the central hole uh, at eight millimeters, and that's a nice close fit onto here. So there's about twenty microns clearance on this diameter here and that's what engages with the central hole so <clears throat> so this brass shaft is or this brass bush is is effectively a bearing uh, so i haven't gone for rolling element bearings here i've gone for a plain bearing because i wanted to keep the diameter as small as possible and <clears throat> the outside diameter of the stainless steel handle is 15 millimeters and that tapers down to uh, about 12 millimeters at this end here. So the way, so the idea is that um, it's a, I thought it would be nicer to hold if it's got a slight taper to it. Um, so it's a, it's a bit like the handles on my Bridgeport machine. Um, it's tapered with a, um, like a parallel piece at the end, section at the end. And then <clears throat> the, the other thing that I did was um, screw this. So on here, um, I mentioned the, the little cone section. So this diameter is a bit chewed up because I've had to hold onto the, the last one millimeter of it with a pair of pliers because um, my milling machine's out of action at the moment. So when it's back up and running, I'll machine two little flats onto this cone here so that I can get. An adjustable spanner just on the end of it and the reason I need to do that is so that I can um, lock the threads together um, and set the the, the, um, the clearance <clears throat> so that when this goes in here it fits into that counter bore which is an 11 mil counter bore it's about one and a half deep so that pops into there and it's just got a little bit sticking out there and then Inside there, the end face of the of the bush wants to be just proud of the shoulder in the counter ball uh, by about 30 to 50 microns, I think is about right, because um, I don't want it to bind. I don't want it to be a tight fit. Um, I just want to have a tiny amount of, of end float for and aft. Um, so, so that's it really. Um, it's a, just a quick video just to show how I've constructed these little hand wheels uh, or the handles for the hand wheels. Um, and they, they're running nice and, nice and smoothly. And sometimes when you, when you put things like this together, they can feel a bit gritty. Um, and mine did to begin with, and I knew that I had some junk in there. So um, I sprayed it all out with WD-40, blew it all off with the airline, gave it a really good clean and uh, made sure that everything went back together really nice and clean and then you don't get any grittiness and everything feels nice and smooth um, when it's all operating so that goes in there that goes in there that winds up to there and then all i do is i just get a pair of pliers on the end of there and nip the screw head up and then box your uncle and then with the head of the, the hexagon in the cap screw then I can tighten that down nice and tight onto the machine and the handle's still free to turn nice and freely. All right well so that's it really just a just a quick update video if anyone's interested in in doing a similar thing on their lathe um, this is the approach I took and it's a it's much more low lower profile than if you go for rolling element bearings because they're, they're going to add on easily another 10 millimeters to the diameter. And then personally, I feel that it looks a bit cumbersome for a small lathe and they look a bit out of place and it's not really to my taste. So, you know, I accept this isn't, this isn't to everybody's taste, but you know, it's, it's my preferred approach. Um, so there you go. Um, thanks for watching and uh, I'll be back soon with another one. Take care. Bye for now.